General election, independent India, history of independent India. Uh, yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. 1951-52. Uh, that that is five years after India got independence. So that was the first general election. So let's now move on to the second question. So right answer, uh, the student who will be giving the right answer shall be getting a chocolate like as a So now moving on to the second question. So when is the National Voters Day celebrated in India? It was recently in the news as well. So when was the National Voters Day? 25 Jan. That's right. So from 2011 onwards, the National Voters Day is celebrated and uh, it commemorates basically the uh, constitution of the election commission of india way back in 1950 when the con election commission of india was uh, set up so that date corresponds with that so now moving on to the third question how many fundamental rights are there enshrined in the indian constitution anyone Six. Who is that? From where is it coming? Okay. How many? So six rights are fundamental. Okay. What's your name? Purvanshi. Purvanshi has got it right. It's six. <laughs> Few of the students said it's seven. Well, uh, it actually was seven when the Indian Constitution was uh, uh, enacted. After that, by the 44th Amendment in 1978, the right to property was removed and it is now a legal right uh, which is included in Article 300A of the Constitution of India. Now moving on to the question number 4. Who is the ultimate guarantor of fundamental rights in India? Supreme Court, Parliament, Prime Minister or is it the President of India? Please raise your hands. President of India. Guarantor of fundamental rights by which the Supreme Court has uh, various writ jurisdictions like Pio Warrento, Habeas Corpus, Certiorari, and others. So, for the for guaranteeing the fundamental rights of ordinary citizens in India. Now, moving on to the fifth question. So, what is the main source or sources of law in India? Constitution, Supreme Court, Statute, Customary Law. Or is it all of the above? Please raise your hand. Whoever so wants to Constitution. That's wrong. All of the above. All of the above. You lost your chance now. All of the above. What is your name? Suri. <laughs> so that's that's right. Constitutional law is the supreme law, like uh, no law which is uh, made by the parliament can be in contravention to the constitutional law 
but otherwise the indian law derives from a lot of uh, judicial precedences also like the case law and the english common law also so now moving on to the sixth question how many times the national emergency has been declared in india once twice thrice or none twice uh, it is wrong Your name. Please announce your name. Uh, Sir Rahul. Okay. What is your answer? So three times. Yeah, right. That's right. First, it was in 1962 during the India-China war. Second, India-Pakistan war, 1971, and the third, the uh, imposition of national emergency by Shri Mati Indira Gandhi during 1975 to 77. So thrice. so now moving on to the seventh question now this is very common like uh, routine you will see whenever you are going to exercise your uh, uh, franchise like uh, what is shown in the following image anybody can elaborate the parts anybody can elaborate the parts anyone can elaborate the parts EVM, but uh, what about the parts, individual components? Like E pad. Yeah, one of the component is V V pad. There are two other components. The first is a control unit, and second is a ballot unit. Right, right. What is your name? Just leave. Just yeah. Please. So towards the right, this is the voter verifiable paper audit trail. The second is uh, in the mid. It is the uh, ballot unit, and the third is the control unit with the presiding officer. So moving on to the eighth question, Chief Election Commissioner is appointed for a period of how many years? Give the mic. Six years. Yeah. What What is your name? Ahan. Ahan is what is right. So it is six years. Chief Election Commissioner is appointed for a period of six years, and uh, it is as per the Article Three Twenty Four of the Constitution of India. Now moving on to the ninth question. Lok Sabha election is held to elect. members of legislative assembly president chief minister or is it member of parliament member of parliament team oh. name shorya sure. member of parliament team yeah right so the last and the final question election commission of india can conduct which election is it the general election state legislative assembly election municipal bodies or a and b please give the mic whoever is raising the hand <laughs> That's right. Election Commission of India. So that 
concludes the session. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. As we gather here today, I'm reminded of the immense power that lies within each and every one of us. The power to shape the destiny of our nation through our voices, our action, and most importantly, our votes. We stand at a critical juncture in our country's history with the upcoming looks of our elections looming on the horizon. It is imperative now, more than ever, that we exercise this right to vote and fulfill our duty as responsible citizens of this great democracy. The youth of our nation constitute a formidable force capable of bringing... Let's give a round of applause for our guests who are just right. Continuing, capable of bringing about transformative change and driving the wheels of progress forward. In this digital age where technology permeates every aspect of our lives, the Election Commission of India has launched the innovative Sweep app, an initiative aimed at empowering voters, particularly the youth, to make informed decisions and actively participate in the electoral process. Through this user-friendly app, users or voters can access com comprehensive information about candidates, constituencies, and election procedures enabling them to make educated choices that align with their values and aspirations. But the Sweep app is more than just a tool for accessing information. It symbolizes the spirit of democracy, the idea that every citizen has the right to participate in the governance of their country, regardless of their background or circumstances. It embodies the principle of inclusivity, ensuring that even the most marginalized voices are heard and, and represented in the corridors of power. My dear friends, as we stand on the cusp of a new era, let us embrace our role as agents of change and champions of democracy. Let us pledge to vote not just for ourselves, but for the future generations, for the India we aspire to build, where justice, equality, and opportunity prevail for all. In conclusion, I urge each and every one of you to exercise your vote to, in the upcoming Sabha elections, Lok Sabha elections, let us not squander this precious gift of democracy, but rather, let us wield it with wisdom, courage, and conviction. Together, let us pave the way for a brighter, more inclusive future for our beloved nation. Thank you.